We are fortunate enough in Verke that we get to work with digital youth work topics day in, day out, and we can really focus on this thing. And to our knowledge, we really are the only organization in, in Europe currently that can do this, at least on this kind of scale. So that's super nice. Yeah, I won't be sharing my screen. I'll do this a bit differently. Well, now you should all be seeing my picture and, and my slides as well, because this is just how I like to do this. I'll put the slides up here. They will also be available probably on the MOOC platform. And if you do post anything on social media, please tag us, our account, Verkeorg, in the proceedings. We can also nab it into our Instagram stories and such. Always a pleasure. So very shortly, we've been around since 2011, and we currently coordinate the Center for Digital Youth Work in uh, Center for Expertise on Digital Youth Work in Finland. We used to be the center, now we are coordinating it, so we have our friends from Northern Finland, Koordinaatti, whom you may know from uh, Unity Information Services. They are also with us in this kind of consortium for digital youth work. So this is how things are structured now, and we get some benefits from having our friends from Oulu aboard as well, which is super nice. And we have seven people, uh, seven people full-time working with digital youth work. Currently, we focus on this kind of topics, or rather, before COVID hit, we were supposed to focus on all of this stuff. It's uh, obviously changed some of our, our focuses as well. So, for example, we want, want to talk about something new in the Finnish youth field, which is uh, climate effects of this technologization in youth work. Like, youth work in Finland has talked about uh, sustainability a lot, but we are trying to now talk about how the technology that we use in youth work, how it affects climate change, how it affects the climate in general. And of course, obviously, climate is a huge topic for young people as well. And this kind of strategic thinking in digital youth work, that's an oldie for us. We've been pushing it for a while now already in the Finnish youth field. And this was also before COVID hit, we were talking more and more on how to make this kind of I dislike the word hybrid because it's used so much now uh, in relation to COVID strategies, but this kind of multi-tiered approach to digital youth work, like how can you use online youth work and other digital means in tandem when you're working with the same group of young people? This is what we would wish to, wish to promote more. And finally, we talk about competence development and especially criteria. Because obviously we are at a stage where we need to be able to measure how digital youth work impacts young people, how it impacts people in general. And for that, we need some kind of criteria on what youth workers should actually know about digital youth work. So very shortly again, so to set the context, so digital youth work is always about using and addressing digital media and, and technology in youth work. And we've advocated for years also that uh, digital youth work should be seen as a tool, activity, and content in youth work. Of course, what happened with COVID, very much in terms of what, where we are now, digital youth work is a lot seen now as the alternative to face-to-face -face youth work and only as the platform where we can now organize youth work. And sure, it's super hard to organize new activities around digital youth work like maker stuff or STEM when you're having to organize them via online tools like Zoom here. So it's not easy by any means. But we've taken a hit in this kind of how, how multi-tiered our approaches are. We've taken kind of a hit now because of COVID, unfortunately. But before COVID, we were in a nice uh, situation that I remember when we first met with Nerius, where the first European shared definitions were just starting to come out. We met in a training in Oulu, and we were just getting the first definitions on how digital youth work is understood across member states. So what it brought, up, brought to us as trainers, obviously, was that we didn't have to start every training from defining together what digital youth work could maybe mean. We could just take the shared European definition and drop it on the table and say, okay, this is the definition, this is what we're working with. So it made things a lot easier in several digital youth work trainings. 
And also there was a clear advancement on what digital youth work means, that it's not only about the online component, uh, but rather it's a much wider topic. And this is especially true for Finland, uh, because Finland has a long history on online youth work. So digital youth work was often also seen only as this online thing. But sure, approaches across Europe were varied. My favorite example of, is always about Irish colleagues saying that, okay, we would like to do this online thing, but we can't because of our own legislation. Or sometimes youth work just didn't develop in a way that developed in another European state. And that's why approaches are very different across different countries. But we've started seeing also a lot of cool examples on, for example, how to use uh, practical technology education approaches also in youth work. There have been maker spaces across Europe for a long while already, but they haven't been that much utilized in youth work approaches. And one of the countries pioneering this a lot has been, has been Ireland, and that is very active in STEAM approaches. So if you don't know what STEAM means, it means STEM, so science, technology, uh, engineering, and maths. But the A stands for art, which I think is really cool that art is brought into the equation as well. So they've been very active in taking STEAM and using it as a goal-oriented youth work activity. And of course, it's, it's also tied to the whole climate change thematic, or it, at least it can be very easily tied into that. So it's a cool way to also very practically address something that young people are very concerned about. The picture here is actually from Luxembourg, which also has a really cool network of makerspaces across the country. Digital games is another thing, especially at one point it seemed that German-speaking countries were very active in using digital games in a very goal-oriented way in youth work. Now here's a difference. We've had games in youth houses for a while already, but what we saw as a development was that it was started to be seen as a very goal-oriented tool for youth workers to maybe explore young people's group dynamics or as a platform to also also work with young people within, within those games, not only as an activity happening in the youth house on the side. This is, of course, happening also, and this is perfectly fine, but it's not the only approach. And before COVID, we've been seeing that youth work has gotten as far as using esports, like competitive gaming, as a vessel for youth work as well. So that's cool. Also, of course, game development, the programming side of things, all of these things are also being adopted, which is very nice. Media education, of course, I think the age of Trump brought on this fake news phenomena again in a larger way. And countries in Europe were also addressing with young people how to tackle reliability of information, fake news, but also young people's digital skills in the sense of how they mirror themselves how they see themselves uh, in relation to digital media. This is a big topic alongside online security and cyberbullying and all of these big themes that are happening across Europe. And it was cool. It's been cool to see over the years how these topics have been explored in very cool and very interesting non-formal ways, like very new approaches, new kind of media projects run, run with young people where they can, for example, explore their own relationship to digital media. So it's very motivating to see. But of course, then COVID hits. And what is uh, apparent is that COVID has affected us in, in a wide variety of ways. Some actors have gotten a huge push from it. Like clearly, we've gotten the feedback from youth workers across Finland, also from uh, across Europe, that. COVID has pushed them to jump into the online game where, where they probably wouldn't have done that, at least yet. Then again, for the people who have already experimented with various new ways of implementing digital youth work methods, they've regressed because they can't do their interesting Arduino stuff or building robots in the same way as before. So they've been more involved in online youth work as well. And often these kind of what I tend to call digital activists, they've been called on to implement or help their colleagues implement the digital youth work in their work communities. And of course, what this has meant is that they haven't necessarily had time to 
do a lot of innovative digital youth work themselves because they've been so so stuck on guiding their colleagues, which is good that the expertise is there. But on the other hand, it's a huge responsibility for some. And we've seen this, for example, in Finland as well, that while there is a long-standing tradition of online youth work in Finland on a kind of institutional level or a country level, national level, but a lot of practitioners have said that I've never done online youth work before. So there are also a lot of newcomers into the mix. And then the focus is understandably not on the long-term development of the field, but rather it's about how do we react to this current situation that we find ourselves in. But the good thing is that youth workers all over Europe have now experimented with online youth work. Like they've dipped their toe into at least this part of digital youth work and they've tried it. And now the question is, how does the field in general or how do organizations exploit that or build onto that? Exploit sounds so negative, but rather how do they take that learning, that motivation that young youth workers now have? They see the value of online approaches. They see the value of digital approaches in general. And how do organizations take that and build something long-term, something lasting onto that? Uh, that is the big question. Not necessarily all organizations have this kind of, how should I say, a strategic plan that would help in, like long-term plan that would help in using this motivation and using this learning. And of course, we see now when things are changing all the time, okay, now we have more restrictions, now we don't have that much restrictions. It's very short-term how we're building up to work. We could see in Finland, for example, that in, in April, when restrictions hit, everyone got into the online things. And around May, when the restrictions started easing up, digital youth works almost completely stopped because people had to concentrate on reopening youth services, youth houses face-to-face, and they had to start uh, concentrating on summer activities, the upcoming summer, of course, quickly planning something. How can we do this? And especially in a new situation, how can we do this safely with still some uh, social distancing measures, some security measures in place as well? So, of course, it's challenging, and I can fully understand why digital youth work wasn't a priority at, at this point anymore. This is from recent recent research into how COVID affected the digital youth field and digital youth work field. And this is a quote from Germany that during the pandemic, we had no choice but to come become digital youth workers overnight. There is a Finnish saying that when you have to do something, it's the best motivator. And that's true. Of course, everyone had to jump online at this point because there really was no other choice. So that's what everyone did. And the research highlighted these preliminary recommendations. So firstly, we should take digital youth work seriously. That is actually a valuable youth work method that has been strengthened along the way. Uh, secondly, we need to realize that there are a lot of gaps still in youth workers' competencies. Youth workers have a lot of learning needs and also a new kind of challenges for their well-being because challenges are very different in online youth work and digital youth work than they are in face-to-face -face youth work. Not completely different, but there are new challenges as well. And thirdly, it's also about youth workers, but also about the young people. So we should provide youth workers access to the technology they need to carry out digital youth work. Plus, we should also make sure that we can provide a youth-friendly internet experience for young people <coughs> Excuse me, when we do build services for them. So firstly, the serious taking message is that the data that they've gathered in this research shows that visual youth work really is an essential field, essential part of youth work practice. And of course, for myself, this is no surprise. This is what we've been advocating with Verga and with Nereus for several years already, that, that digital youth work shouldn't be something like a specialized area. It shouldn't be something that only a few individuals do, but rather it should be an integral part, an essential part of what we really do. And it's good that, of course, that this kind of reinforces that view as well in the future. Secondly, it's true that a lot of youth workers require a lot of support in how to implement digital youth work and also how to really support young people. And not only like how do they implement the actual work, but how do they understand the whole phenomena of digitalization? It's not as simple as it would uh, seem. 
we get a lot of we get a lot of people talking even on an EU level when we talk about young people's digital competencies, for example. It's a very mechanical kind of view. We're talking about young people's employability. We're talking about can they make a proper CV? Do they have the uh, skills to use government services to look for a job? But it's actually a much bigger thing than that. There are fundamental changes coming to to working life in general. On the other hand, a lot of social aspects of, of, of life are moving and have moved online as well. So how do youth workers support young people in that? That is a big question, of course. And of course, here, like a lot of support is required also in, in the sense that when things are changing with COVID very rapidly right now, where do youth workers turn for support? This is a big question also highlighted in the preliminary research results. And thirdly, we've they've noticed in the research, which again comes not as a big surprise for me, that a lot of youth workers have used their own devices, their own connections to, to contact young people within this pandemic. Either the devices uh, that are provided by their organizations, they are not up to date, or they are more geared towards office work. Even if it's a brand new device, if it's very closed and very much designed for office work, it doesn't necessarily pivot very nicely to online youth work or digital youth work methods. So that is an issue. The future developments should really take this into account. Like, how do we get access for youth workers to devices that they can actually use for digital youth work as well? All of this research or the preliminary results are on Salto, so you can access them there. These are just the main three things they highlighted. And I'm by no means expert on this research, but you can find their contact information there as well. Second cool thing that is running at the moment, the Ray Network that researches the researches the how the Erasmus Plus youth program works and how it affects young people and the youth field. They are running a research currently on the effects of corona in the youth field. And they also have, if you go right now to researchyouth.net, you can already find uh, preliminary results of the first round of research on this. And a teaser about future things, they're actually now starting also a new research project, which is not officially even published yet, it's so new. Ray Digi will focus on research of digital youth work and how digital youth work impacts or how it's related to the goals of the Erasmus Plus youth program. So I, for one, I'm super interested in seeing what kind of stuff they come up with in this. And this research project is heavily connected to another initiative that is starting now. So snack, not snacks. Snacks are always nice, but this is the monster of uh, strategic national agency cooperation. So cooperation project between different Erasmus Plus national agencies, which we are also involved in. It's going to run from next year until 2023. And, and there are five work packages within this digital youth work snack. Firstly, which we are running is national strategies for digital youth work. So we're talking with ministries on how the national strategies are, how they should be developed, etc which will be interesting to see. Secondly, a second work package run by our friends in Estonia is uh, focusing on, on uh, digital competencies, digital capacities of especially youth workers, like the practitioners in the field. Then our Irish colleagues are focusing on young people's digital skills, like how they are seen, what kind of digital skills uh, young people need, and also how youth workers can support this and fourth, our German partners are focusing on new online youth work practice. So what kind of new approaches have been envisioned to online youth work, especially within during this COVID pan pandemic? And fifth, our friends from the Netherlands are focusing on, on a quality of blended mobilities and also online mobilities within the Erasmus Plus programs. So it'll be very cool to see what comes out of this project. Someone wrote that sounds more like a dinner than a little snack. That's very true. This is a really big project and it's so far, it's taking shape, but it's still very complicated. But I'm sure this will be 
like the official info about this will also be out soon, but you also get now a, a slight preview of what's to come. Cool. I went through this already in my previous one, so I'll just highlight a couple of things. So moving forward, I hope that everyone can better identify what we are actually doing, because when we're reacting to things like a global pandemic, it really helps if we are super clear on what our goals are, like what we are actually doing, why we are doing the kind of youth work that we are doing. It doesn't help that, okay, we have these, let's say, theater activities, but rather what the youth work goals behind that all are. So it helps a lot. Steal and borrow, but give it back. So share all the cool stuff that you are doing with other practitioners and find also sources for uh, good practice. We have different kinds of plans. This is more of an organizational level thing. Make sure that strategic plans, action plans, and also like personal, personal touch how we work within those plans. Make sure that's up to date. And, and finally, again, identify what the practice actually is on an organizational level, work community level, and on a practice level. Because that's a very different thing also. But if you need a refresher on that, I spoke about it on my last one, so I won't get deeper into it. Again, a few resources. Check our website, English Materials. DigitalYouthWork.eu has a lot of cool examples around different European countries on really like practice level stuff, what's actually been done with youth workers. And do follow ResearchUse.net if you are interested in, in what's happening in the research field. Cool. Thanks. I can be contacted there with any issues, questions later on as well. And you can find our website at verke.org. And then the English button, of course, in the corner, unless you understand Finnish, which is very rare in non-Finns. But I've been told it's, it can be a real language, but I'm pretty sure it is. Thank you. Mm -hmm.